Hello and welcome back to another Moto Vlog and today's vlog we're going to be reviewing this 1996 BMW R850R and this is by special request several of my viewers have asked if I can do a review of this bike so here we go let's review this old BMW now BMW manufactured these bikes from uh, 1994 until 2006, 2007, round there. And of course, it's powered by BMW's famous boxer engine. So, as the name suggests, this is uh, an 848cc engine, which is equivalent to uh, 51.7 cubic inches. Okay, so let's have a look at these front forks that we've got here. Now, inside these stanchions, there are no springs, just oil. All the dampening is done on this one central spring on BMW's teller lever system that they have here. Now, this bike virtually eliminates diving now I've ridden lots of motorcycles that claim to have anti-dive front forks but once you've got luggage on your bike and a passenger that all disappears when somebody pulls out in front of you and you pull on the anchors you, your passenger and your luggage are basically all sat on the tank now this bike, like I said, virtually eliminates that with this telelever system now I often ride this bike two up and with luggage as well and I have to say, it works very, very well indeed. The only criticism is, of course, it does add a lot of weight to the motorcycle. Right, let's turn our attention to the braking system on this bike. There's no ABS on here. But on the front, we've got uh, two 320 millimeter floating discs with uh, Brembo 4-pot piston calipers So let's uh, have a look at the rear end. Now this is BMW's famous cantilever rear suspension. A single sided swing arm with this huge drive shaft that we have here. So there's no oily chains to contend with. Again what you get here is a lovely smooth riding experience okay we shall look at the uh, the rear brake here 
another Brembo caliper on a 276mm disc Now I find this motorcycle to be an excellent ride It is possibly one of the most comfortable motorcycles I have ever ridden Maybe not as comfortable as a, a Honda Goldwing Aspen Cade but then this is not a motorised armchair Now here we have BMW's famous boxer engine. This engine produces around 70 horsepower at 6,750 uh, RPM with uh, a claimed 77 newton meters of torque. So a lovely torquey engine this one. And of course it's a boxer engine and BMW have been building boxer engines since 1923 so they really do know one or two things about them and they've been uh, copied several times over nearly a hundred years certainly a lot of the Eastern Bloc countries copied this system of the boxer engine also uh, Harley Davidson also uh, copied this in uh, the 1940s now of course this is a, an updated boxer engine four valves per cylinder and it's air cooled and oil cooled as well as it has these oil coolers each side of the tank now several people have asked me about this binnacle with the single speedo in it because they've got R850Rs that have got a speedometer, a rev counter and an analog clock in. Well this is because this bike is version number one of the R850Rs. BMW updated the bike um, in about 1998 they changed the binnacle to a, a larger I don't know, a more modern style that they had. Over the years the bike was updated quite considerably I'll put a picture up now of uh, the updated binnacle there you are now also over the years BMW changed the style of the tank and the tank incorporated the oil coolers they brought the oil coolers up higher with a, with a shroud round them which made it a, a more streamlined styling the, uh, the seat was also changed but uh, the engine and gearbox and that all remained the same so if we look at the binnacle here we can also see there's a hazard light switch and the heated grips as well that this motorcycle has it also has the, uh, the separate turn signals as well which uh, lots of people don't like the turn signal on the left and on the right and then you have a cancelling uh, button there as well to cancel them so there's the other turn signal there on the other side underneath the, uh, the horn button
So even so, this motorcycle has a claimed 70 horsepower. It's not all that fast. There's around 120 miles an hour. Nought to 60 in about four and a half to five seconds. Um, does around 40 miles to the gallon. And the fuel tank holds around five and a half gallons. Now, the problems that I've had with this motorcycle are basically just wear and tear. One of the main problems with this bike is the wiring. The plastic outer sheath of the wiring seems to deteriorate. It goes all brittle and cracks and just drops off basically. So I've had all this tank off and I've gone through the wiring and gone over it with plenty of tape as I don't want to put a new wiring loom in here. Not at this juncture anyway. Also, if we look down here at the gear change mechanism now you see this is all loose sometimes will give me uneven gear changes and I have trouble finding the gears because this is all loose there is a bush that goes through here which unfortunately has gone so that will need replacing as well but that's another trait of this motorcycle that they go as well that's all it is really, just bushes going and the wiring. Now some people also complain that these bikes smoke on startup. And that's true of this one as well, but only if you have it on its side stand. When it's on its side stand and it's leaning, you'll get a trickle of oil going into this pot. So of course when you start up, it will smoke. Now there's a way around that whenever you park it up put it onto its centre stand when I put this bike away at night in the garage it always goes on its centre stand that way when I start it up there's no smoking at all but if I was to leave it on its side stand where the bike's tilted over then in the morning when I start it you'll get a little bit of smoke but other than that it's nothing to be, uh, to be worried about not unless of course it's pouring out <laughs> miles and miles of smoke then there's something to be worried about but no other than that that's okay so it's just like I was saying just basically wear and tear on the motorcycle now in a previous video I've had to change the uh, brake pipes on the front and unfortunately BMW no longer make them but uh, I did manage to get some race pipes instead now one of the, uh, the excellent things about this bike is you can adjust the seat height. It's got a three positions. One is a 760mm, one 780mm and the last one is 800mm. Now they call them boxer engines because these uh, cylinders stick out the sides and of course the pistons punch out like a, like a boxer's fist. So, right then, that is the BMW R850R, so let's climb aboard and take it for a ride.
So here we are then, out on the open road. And I have to say, for me, I find this motorcycle a joy to ride. You can quite see so, why uh, so many people go touring on these BMW motorcycles, whether it's the uh, R850R, the 1100R, 1150R, RTs, GSs, really are wonderful motorcycles to ride and very, very comfortable, like I was saying earlier on. One of the most uh, comfortable bikes I've ever ridden, in fact. Because of the seating position, you sat uh, upright. For me, the handlebars, brake levers, clutch levers, everything is in near enough the exact position that I'd like it to be in. And the weight distribution on this bike is evenly matched because of the engine, this boxer engine with the pistons sticking out each side. You have that uh, low centre of gravity. Now like I was saying before, it's not uh, a fast motorcycle, not a slow motorcycle neither. To a standing quarter of a mile in about 12 seconds, I think. But then, you know, this is not uh, a race replica. This is a, a motorcycle to, uh, to get you from A to B with ease. And at the time when this uh, came out, you could get uh, just about everything for it. Panniers, top boxes, tank bags. I've got panniers, incidentally, and I've got a uh, tank bag as well with it. Now there's lots of people out there that don't actually like the uh, the boxer engines. You either love them or you hate them. They don't like the way it shakes from side to side when it's ticking over. Now about 15 years ago I actually had uh, a Honda CX500 and that was uh, a very similar sensation because that was a V-twin, but with the pistons up each side of the tank. And you'd be at the traffic lights and that would be shaking from side to side.
I don't think I picked a, a very good day to do a moto vlog. Although it's nice and sunny today, it is very, very windy. Yeah, so I do apologise if all you can hear is wind noise. Now another thing that people don't like about uh, these BMW motorcycles is the indicator switches. Because down on here you've got a left hand switch and on the other side there's a right hand switch. But to cancel them there's another button underneath. just underneath the uh, the main light switch there which you have to use to cancel the indicators where lots of uh, the mainstream Japanese models of course just have a single indicator 
switch on sort of this this side where you press you uh, flick it to go left or right and then press it in again to cancel but it's just one of those things one of those quirks of riding a German motorcycle and uh, you easily get used to it Now one more thing that you've got on the handlebars here is a choke lever which is, it's, although it says choke on it, it's really just a fast idle as this motorcycle is fuel injected
so there you have it the BMW R850R some people hate them some people love them like I say I love it it really is the perfect motorcycle for me I do have a couple of qualms of course with it the uh, the quirky front suspension that we have there and of course the huge drive shaft and all that makes it a rather heavy motorcycle but once you're up and running and riding down the street it doesn't seem heavy at all there's one thing that I do wish that the motorcycle had and that is a fuel gauge yes I know you can set your trip meter every time you fill up but sometimes you don't always fill up you just put like 10 pounds worth of fuel in or what's that um, seven dollars worth of fuel in and that gets you about I don't know shall we say 150 miles perhaps then after that you'll go to another petrol station put in another seven dollars and only get 120 miles out of it because of the price of the fuel because you know petrol stations charge a different amount wherever you go so uh, I really do wish that it had a fuel gauge but other than that it's it's an excellent motorcycle well so there you have it that is my review of this BMW R850R now I hope you've enjoyed this review and if you have then maybe you'd like to give us those thumbs up and subscribe so until next time thanks for watching and please stay safe